If you're asked to do a pupillary examination, be rest assured it's either anisocoria or it's going to be relative afferent pupillary defect. And this is how I start the pupillary examination. I start with looking at the habitus as in general inspection. I start looking at the habitus. I uh, immediately quickly rule out with one look at horses or proctosis and then I look at the neck. Neck should be free of clothes. You should look at scars if there are any present. Make a note of it chest if that's possible and for look specifically for endarterectomy scars that way you're ruling out any carotid artery uh, uh, surgery post-surgical carotid artery or Horner's syndrome then look at the hands please you know, yeah, do this the hands are not wasted indicating that this patient may not have any thoracic outlet obstruction syndrome as a Horner's relax now what you'll have to do is start with examining the pupil now you ask the patient to look at a distant target always start your examination by giving a target never with a torch light reflex okay so preferably a six meter distant target is what is given please look at the light please look straight please do not look at the torch when i am going to examine you so i start with examining the patient in ambient light where I see if there are any discoloration on the face or any nevi, hemangioma, etc. etc. I also find out that if the patient has got ptosis or proptosis just with cursory examination. Now, these are a few pointers that you will have to know. If you are too tall a person, do not hesitate to sit like this at the level of the patient's eyelids. Now, if you are a short person, make sure you have a comfortable stool or a chair and sit at the eye level. I am neither tall nor short, so I am going to bend to his eye level. The second thing that I have that you will have to keep in mind is that you should not stand directly in front of the patient and examine. The point here is that the examiner, he may not know what you are eliciting. Number two is that when the patient, if you are going to stand in front of the patient, he is not going to look at the target and thereby you are going to induce meiosis and induce the accommodation. So your inferences are going to be incorrect. So always try, stand to the right side of the patient which is conventional and bend to his eye level. The things that you will have to talk about people are the size, the shape and if it's got, if he's got heterochromia, anisocoria in the bright light and anisocoria in the dark. Okay, so that you elicit by standing like this and throwing the light on the chin. Look straight. So this is effectively going to give a clue about what's happening to his pupil. I will start with mentioning the patient has got 2 millimeters or 2.5 millimeters of pupil. Their pupil is round, well centered. There is no heterochromia, there is no anisocoria in the bright light. Now I am going to elicit, look straight, now I am going to elicit Hirschberg's. The Hirschberg's is normal in primary position of gaze. Once you do this, you will have to dim the light. Dim the light and con again compare the pupil in the dark. Uh, uh, there is no anisocoria in the dark, that's it. Okay. Now you have to start with pupillary reaction. Now there are two parts to this pupillary reaction. Number one is the direct reflex. Number two is the consensual reflex. Obviously you cannot do a consensual reflex without eliciting the direct response. You need to use two torch lights for consensual. One is to compare the other eye while you are eliciting the swinging flashlight test and the second is to do the actual examination okay so there are various light sources that you can use but it's always preferred and it's more professional if you use a torch light the torch light will have to be like this there should not be any holes in the middle of the torch it has to be focused light when you do a direct examination and the torch will have to be of appropriate brightness it should not be too bright or it should not be too dim the second torch light is going to be a wide angle torch light. It's going to compare the reaction of both the pupils. So these two torches are important. You can of course throw in the indirect light source, but it's always professional that you use a simple torch light for your examination. So while doing your pupillary examination, you will have to mention you're doing a direct light reflex and a consensual light reflex.
when you do a direct reflex you should not see the other eye you must see the eye that you are shining the light on and when you're doing a consensual light reflex you're seeing the other eye when you throw the light on one you always uh, start the pupillary reaction for, by bringing the light from the side avoid doing this i am throwing the torch in the right eye and i see that the right eye pupil is constricting briskly look straight please i am throwing the torch in the left eye and i see that the left eye pupil is constricting briskly this is how the direct is elicited once the direct is elicited you will have to do the consensual examination which will effectively tell you if the patient has got relative afferent pupillary defect or no once again shine the torch light on the chin or on the tip of his nose so that when you throw the torch on the right eye you are going to elicit the reflex in the left eye and it is vice versa okay so this is how you say i am throwing the torch in the right eye and i am eliciting the pupillary response in the left eye the left eye is reacting briskly give one give three counts before you change hands 1 2 3 I am throwing torch in the left eye and I am eliciting pupillary reaction in the right eye. The pupil is reacting briskly. Or if the pupil is not reacting in case of RAPD, say the pupil is dilating instead of constricting. So let me repeat this once again. 1,2,3 So this movement, this smooth movement is very crucial to elicit RAPD. You finish your uh, pupillary examination with giving a accommodation target so that you rule out light near dissociation. If there is a light near dissociation, be rest assured that there is some midbrain pathology and you will have to discuss your case accordingly. So I ask the patient to look straight, please look straight and then I introduce the target from down. Okay, so that way the patient is going to look from far to near and you will have to observe the re pupillary reaction to this look at the target because i am a left i am a right hander i hold my torch in the right hand and i give the accommodation target in the left look straight look at the target now look straight there is no light near as dissociation so ruling out any potential midbrain pathology you will have to start with mentioning the size of the pupil in millimeters always mention the size then shape okay if it is round well centered or if there is corectopia or if there is dilatation then you talk about centration so these are the three things you will have to talk about when you start this can be done only on comparison before you start the direct torchlight examination the second thing you will have to talk about is the heterochromia that is the color of the iris now this can be mentioned only when you do a torchlight examination comparing both the eyes in the bright light the third thing is if you have anisocoria mention anisocoria if it is in the bright light or mention anisocoria if there is a uh, if it is in the dim light now if you have physiological anisocoria it would be the same both in the bright light and in the dim light if it is going to be pathological pathological anisocoria it will be either in the bright light or in the dim light so these two points are very vital when you do a torchlight examination now when you uh, when you are asked to do a swinging flash test remember you will have to always start with a direct torchlight examination observing the pupil with the direct torchlight and then going to and then you will have to go ahead with the swinging flashlight Now the don'ts are avoid standing in front of the patient because that is going to induce myosis that is going to induce accommodation. The second thing will be you should avoid throwing light directly on the eyes. So if you are going to throw the light directly what would happen is there could be blepharospasm you will induce uh, if there is a mild RAPD you may you may miss the finding you will not be able to elicit it. So you must avoid throwing and you will also have some watering. so which uh, may hamper with your inferences and you may not have much of time to um, ask the patient to poach his eyes and then do the test once again 
the third thing is you need not darken the room completely so the examination has to be done in dim light only the fourth one is you it is all right if you use other sources of light like indirect ophthalmoscopic light and um, other hydral lights and things but it looks very professional if you use a torchlight and more so if you use two torchlights it's going to look more impressive